Are there any late items identified by councillors? Seeing none, any late items from the city clerk? None, would somebody like to move approval of the agenda? So move, Madam Mayor. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Carried. And we have minutes from our special meeting of council hold, held at 12.30 p.m. and our regular meeting of health, council held at 2 p.m. on May 13th, as well as the special meeting of council held at 4 p.m. on May 21st. Move to adopt. Is there a seconder? Second. Any questions or comments on the minutes? All in favor? Carried. And that brings us to public input period, which is an opportunity for the public to address council on topics of relevance to city council. A maximum of four speakers for no more than three minutes each will be accommodated. Would anybody like to speak? Come on forward. And if you don't mind just introducing yourself and stating your address for the record. And the address is 431 Princess Road. Thank you. And does it, does it have to be relevant to today's discussion? No. Thing can be anything. Okay. I'm just curious, back when uh, New Mount Mayor and Council were elected, uh, there was a change to the meeting time from 7 till 2. And at that time, it was mentioned that Mayor and Council be looking at other ways of engaging the community. Mm -hmm. Because the 7 p.m. sort of eliminates the possibility for people working and a lot of people that aren't available during the daytime. So I'm curious what Council and Mayor and Council have done to engage the public in more meaningful ways that have sort of separated those that can't come during the day. So I'm just curious what, because that was mentioned, that would be part of the process, the new ways of engaging, finding other places to meet in time. So I'd like to hear about that. I haven't seen anything in the paper, haven't heard any mention, so I'm just curious on that if you can answer that one sure so we don't normally give answers here but I can um, just okay. give a quick um, so we have done a lot more social media engagement we're also doing more regular committee of the whole meetings which are um, usually at 4 p.m. Um, and usually run for a couple hours um, so those meetings have been quite full um, and around our council table we also have some new ideas for um, like coffee with councils and things like that that we're working to implement as well um, and additionally we are looking at um, streaming our meetings on social media and potentially working into the future um, taking input in that way as well so yeah thanks for the question and um, there'll be more to come for sure so in the future don't ask questions just comments then right sure okay. but uh, we don't mind <laughs> thank you very much thank, thank, you. You. thank you would any other members of the public like to speak come on forward Hello, um, Aaron Brevik, 2840 Highmore Road. I come before you today to request help. I was misunderstood last time we spoke, thinking that we were moving forward to a committee of the whole meeting, but in reality, we endorsed a recommendation uh, to drag my rezoning process out with no determined timeline at all. Um, let me be very specific about the issues I have with this process. Six months ago, I paid to have my site rezoned site-specific. I have provided information to the CAO related to the property in town that has already been site-specifically zoned for the same process as myself. This is not a new precedent, and I see no need to hire an outside consultant and waste thousands of dollars only to see that millions have already been spent on studies across the country, and the conclusion is the same. All jobs matter. After speaking with the CAO um, about the committee of the whole meeting and everything, I was told that the staff can only follow your discussion or your direction and that no discussions have taken place around cultivation yet. It is not my intention to open the floodgates for the rest of the valley, but simply to look after our company and ensure that we can submit our application prior to the next federal election, as this is a time sensitive matter. Um, Finally, when told that no discussion has taken place around cultivation, I really do beg to differ. By now, this conversation has happened in every office, every home, with your friends, and certainly with your families. I come before you today seeking a champion, a champion of progress. You have been elected as our best, most diverse voice we have to represent our community, and I trust your voice, your concerns, and your decisions. Far more than some out-of-town consultant with no volunteer record in our community. Please help me by giving clear, precise direction to staff to either proceed with my rezoning or move forward in some considerable determined timeline um, to help me move forward with my business and my relations with my investors. I would move to recommend a $3,000 application fee and a $500 a year business license fee. 
There's one last thing I feel important to mention is that as the APC meeting did make a motion to request that the city move forward with this as soon as possible. And in all fairness, I do not believe that was accurately reflected in the report to the city from the APC committee. We have a fair bit of work to do prior to submitting our federal application and it's a time sensitive matter and I'm begging one of you to please stand up and make this request for me on behalf of your city councillors. Thank you. Great job with the timing. Um, and Mr. Brevik, <laughs> yeah. because I do think um, we need to have conversation about that and this, um, this part of the council meeting is not the time to do that. Um, I'm gonna suggest that we do have a, a item on our agenda F4 for today that is talking about upcoming meetings, um, committee of the whole included. So I think that we could probably have this conversation as a part of that item. So just so that you know, we will talk about it um, during I'll, that part of the agenda today. I'll stick around. Okay. Thank, thank you thank very you. much. Would any other members of the public like to speak? Okay, seeing none. On to delegations, and we have two delegations today. The first one, Owl's Path Tourism. Come on forward, Joel and Marriott and Mary Mason. No. Total summary. <laughs> Joel and Mary from the Owls Path Tourism. Uh, address is 8321 Faber Road. We're here on behalf of the Owls Path Canada Foundation um, in regards to a powwow that we are planning for August. Um, and we are seeking your support and permission um, to use uh, the Bob Daly Stadium as the venue. And if you support that. Um, Oh, this is this. Does I, this run it? I think so. No. Okay. All right. Um, so, family is what give, uh, what keeps us happy. Being together, helping us one another, is what family is all about. Um, so, what we're doing right now is we're bringing uh, my family from Saskatchewan out here to celebrate uh, culture out here in this area with the New Channel nations around us. Um, the plan is to. Uh, um, our vision is, in light of truth and reconciliation, we would like to bring together Indigenous cultures in one big celebration for everyone to enjoy. Uh, the first annual celebration welcomes Indigenous people from Carry the Cattle First Nation and White Bear First Nation from Saskatchewan to meet Indigenous people of the West Coast. Uh, we're proud to use this opportunity to raise money to put towards housing and other needs on White Bear First Nation in Saskatchewan and other reservations throughout Canada. Um, the reason why it's very focused on uh, White Bear First Nation right now is that for the last 12 years, our money has been locked up in a litigation, so there's been no housing, no uh, money for the elderly or anything else on a reserve, so that's kind of why we're uh, bringing our nation out here to try and maybe uh, start something out there. Um, so then the next one is, uh, we'd love for this celebration to grow year after year. Uh, welcoming all nations from across Canada out to the West Coast. Uh, this will bring together culture through dance, stories, and song, while raising money to give back to Indigenous communities. <coughs> so we've actually downsized a little bit because um, we were going to do three locations. Uh, we were going to have two locations in Vancouver and then come over here uh, as our final stop. However, time is uh, carried on very quickly um, so we'd like to focus our uh, event here in Port Alberni um, and just have the one here and then perhaps three next year um, so we are talking with the local First Nations um, they're aware of it and we've invited them all to come uh, to the event and participate if they'd like um, and we have support from uh, Huayat and from ITAC as well um, Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada um, and so they said that they will help with uh, marketing the event as well as uh, putting towards putting a sponsorship towards the event. Uh, so what we're doing right now is we have um, a letter that we're going to be releasing right now. Um, so this is for that powwow. So it's an Indigenous cultural gathering. Um, so what we're trying to do is search out sponsorships. Sponsorships. Uh, do, Four different or three different levels of sponsorship. Uh, the first one is uh, ten thousand dollars, so it'll be named whatever that your name here and the Alice Path Canada Foundation are 
proud to bring you um, the Plains Meets West Coast Meeting of Nations, logo on advertising, posters, video, photography, marketing, mention, launch through the event. Uh, it'll be live feed, fed. Um, so that's part of, uh, I know it's a different, I'm on a different uh, focus <laughs> completely. Um, so within all that, with the marketing and stuff that we're going to be doing, uh, I just crossed both places. Um, so with this letter that we're going, I'll go back to that one in a minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we're looking at um, bringing it as a, as a Port Alberni area uh, event. The reason why is because with, with the area being so open, um, up at the Bob Daly Stadium was where we're going to hold it. Um, we can see that it would be a really good opportunity to bring other nations and cross promote with different communities throughout Canada. And that's all put together and then all brought back here for a marketing pr uh, opportunity for the city as well. Um, because each one, uh, each time that somebody shares something that they've traveled from, say Saskatchewan out here, well, they're going to take all their information and everything about the city back to their city and drop it off again and say, hi, this is where we were, this is what we're doing, and that's another opportunity for us to cross promote with the city and with uh, all the different areas around here. Um, Do you wanna go on that slide? Yeah, okay. Uh, Let's talk about the Powell Troop. Oh yeah, so the Powell Troop will be coming from Saskatchewan, so it'll be uh, Carry the Kettle, they have uh, 30 to 40 people coming out, um, which is a really big troop. It's usually uh, 20 to 25 people. So they're bringing a whole bunch to cover the weekend. Uh, we have... Uh, Kevin Hayway, he's a, an award-winning powwow <coughs> dancer uh, for the last six consecutive years now. Um, so he will be coming out with his troupe and they will have... Uh, they'll be in full regalia. And I think that this event would be um, huge in light of reconciliation um, and... <laughs> Sorry. Um, so with that opportunity to have them here uh, having Kevin here and all the groups here we will be able to bring uh, Mark uh, more <laughs> sorry I don't know where we are here there. that's okay Take a um, give me a second here okay we'll talk about the stadium so Bob Daly Stadium is the perfect venue because of the green area in the middle um, perfect for them to uh, perform on and then having the track around the side uh, you could have vendors uh, come to the event and set up their tables all around um, giving them an option to uh, make some revenue for themselves um, and then at being at the Bob Daly Stadium there's ample seats uh, seating with the bleachers up there so everybody will have a really good view um, and we will be we have it tentatively booked um, for this for the dates, um, and uh, we also have porta potties booked um, and a large dumpster because I was told that that was a requirement at uh, the Bob Daly Stadium if you we weren't renting the Glenwood as well. Um, so we were going to do that, and then we were also going to invite uh, food trucks to the event if they would like to do that as well. So it would be quite a big, quite a big event. <laughs> um, if we, yeah, if you have any questions so far, that would probably help us <laughs> guide us back to where we started off. <laughs> we're, we're really shy. <laughs> Don't be nervous. You're doing fantastic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay um, council questions, Councillor Solda. I'm just kind of curious. How many participants do you anticipate? Um, well, with 40 coming from Saskatchewan plus the new, like uh, we're going through New Toronto as well, so we want to include as many nations as possible. So it is a two week or a two day on the weekend event. So we're saying six to eight hours. You could put in thirty hours or thirty minute uh, event uh, layouts. You probably have about twelve different nations out there if they're willing to come out. Um, we do have emails out to almost every nation around here, um, and we're requesting. And after the videos that we've been posting, we're hoping that more people come out. Um, and so we're keep pushing for that. That's in August, so I mean, we do have a little bit of time for people to start recognizing and coming back and calling us. And with ITAC's help, it'll be very, very beneficial. Yeah. So are you looking at maybe 200, 300? Uh, we're probably, we're gonna say about 150 to 200 people, uh, just as That's the... Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm assuming that they'll be um, staying at our local hotels. So you're in August and there's a lot of other events, hopefully, 
you'll get that information <coughs> out sooner than yeah um, we're our plan is to get it out probably in the next couple of weeks we're just wanting to make sure that we came out here and talked to you guys first make sure everything's all right um, and then also give an opportunity for someone to partner with us for this because if we start marketing from the beginning out then it's just it'll be everywhere right one more question on that. regarding partnering partnering in that have you talked looked at grants and, because there are grants out there for this kind of an event and we have and I spoke to a few people in town and they said that uh, there was a grant for uh, community um, but that needed to be in last year so we kind of missed that one but uh, and, and I know I get the provincial grants and stuff like that there was one that I just put out on Facebook to do with the arts and because this is a culture event so yes. it's in the arts format so I mean this you could that would be awesome um, I will try and search that out right away because um, mm -hmm. we we're looking yeah I think we've I put in two or three different ones right now um, and I'm just waiting on hearing back it usually takes about six weeks from when I filled them that was about two weeks ago so we'll just start hearing them mm -hmm. and I'll look out for that one okay me. and one last question is what are the dates because I never so I you kind of split oh, through the uh, dates yeah sorry um so that will be August 23rd and 24th 23rd and 24th so Friday and Saturday okay. thank you thank you uh, questions from other counselors Okay, I have a few questions. Okay. Um, so uh, you said that you tentatively booked Bob Daly, but I think you also said you wanted our approval. I'm assuming you don't need council's approval um, okay. to proceed with something like this, just Weren't officially. Sure. No, no, that's okay. fine. Just uh, more question for staff if we needed to Madam do Mayor, something or not. If I can on that point, um, if, it's, if it's strictly a rental, um, then council's, council does yeah. not need to approve that. Um, if it's a sponsorship of the event, then I would suggest that council direct staff to engage with Hoopachessa uh, and Sashot first. Um, given that we're on the unceded lands of those two nations. You're taking all my comments, I'm but sorry, thank you. <laughs> so um, that's great. Um, my next comment was going to be um, about the community investment program that you mentioned. Um, we usually do hold back a little bit of funds for the community investment program for late applications. I'm not sure if we have some or not, but um, our director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage is in the back corner and she would be the person to just have a quick conversation with about that. I think that would be the right avenue um, if you did want um, you know, some kind of support from the city. Um, and as our CAO mentioned, um, anything that is First Nations related or a First Nations event, we do um, like to have direct engagement with the shot and Hoopa Chesed on it before the city participates in any way. So um, reaching out and having direct conversations with them about it, if you haven't already, I think would be a great way to start um, and, and get them on board as participants as well. And then um, we like to see that before we um, support it officially. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Any other questions from council? Okay. Well, I want to really thank you for coming um, and for putting together this event. And I see Jeff Cook in the back here as well um, from Huayat. And it sounds like um, it's going to be a really exciting event for the community. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you. Okay. And our next delegation is from AV Minor Lacrosse. We have Larry Ransom. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Larry Ransom and I represent Albany Valley Minor Lacrosse Association. We don't have an official address, a post office box, and uh, you can find us on www.albanylacrosse.ca. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the association. And I'd like to thank Willa Thorpe, Director of Parks and Recreation and Heritage, for applying for the grant to build a new multi sport facility for the community. Greatly appreciated, Willa. Thank you for all your support for lacrosse. And we look, we'll look forward to working with Willa and the Parks and Recreation Department on the consultation and planning and siting of the facility to the maximum benefit, benefit of kids and our community. I'd also like to acknowledge the fantastic staff at the Multiplex, Echo Center, and City Hall that have worked with us over the years. Uh, uh, they've really supported uh, lacrosse in the community and we really appreciate it. It takes many volunteers, past and present, to make a lacrosse season successful. And with me today is Lindsay Hodgson, a minor lacrosse executive member and 2019 novice tournament director, with her son Trevor and teammate Bradley. And also in the audience is Thais senior team lacrosse alumnus Bill Thompson, along with Frank Crooks, Charlie Ransom, and I think, is anybody else here from uh, 
Jeff Cook, supporter of lacrosse, and uh, Heather Welch from the, Ty uh, the Tykes uh, division. So unfortunately, uh, Ty's alumnus and original 1965 minor lacrosse founder, Rob Jones, is unavailable to be with us today. I was hoping he would come and share part of the history. So I'll share the highlights uh, for you that, uh, that we have uh, seen centered around the uh, Recreation Park and the old community arena throughout the 1960s and into the late 80s. And all the earliest uh, recorded game was played at Recreation Park as part of Dominion Day, now Canada Day celebrations, was on Tuesday, July 3rd in 1930. That comes out of the archives. And in 1965, jumping forward a few years, Rob Jones was hired by Port Alberni Parks and Recreation to offer minor lac lacrosse in the Alberni Valley. In 1966, the first senior lacrosse season was played in Port Alberni at the old community arena. In 1971, the Gyro Lacrosse Box opened at Recreation Park. Uh, Davina, could you post up the map of uh, Gyro Recreation Park, please, just for the audiences? Yeah, there's, uh, jump ahead a couple of maps. Uh, there's one of the, that's Williamson Park. Yeah, that's the one. It shows the tennis courts, the, uh, the old lacrosse box on the left, Gyro Youth Center, the old community arena, which is now the Industrial Heritage uh, Building. And you can't quite see it in the bottom left-hand corner is a large playing field that a lot of us in this room grew up playing on when we were younger. So uh, through the 1970s and early 80s, uh, Alberni teams won several island championships and BC championships, including the 1979 JC's midget team coached by Rob Jones when they won the gold medal at the BC Summer Games. Rob's son Warren Jones and Kevin McKay, a founding member of the Albany Valley Minor Lacrosse Association were on that team. In the late 80s, organized lacrosse ceased to play in the Albany Valley, and there was a 15-year absence. In 2002, uh, the Albany Valley Minor Lacrosse Association was constituted to reintroduce lacrosse to the Albany Valley, and the catalyst was the opening of the Albany Valley Multiplex when Parks and Recreation Management approached me about reviving organized lacrosse to help utilize the AB Multiplex more fully. And maybe go back to the uh, first map there. And so I gathered a group of former lacrosse players and our spouses and we formed the association and we recruited players, coaches and for minor hockey, soccer and basketball to get ready for the 2003 Vancouver Island lacrosse season. And here we are in 2019 where our association, association has grown to include five divisions from Tyke Mini Tyke to Novice, Pee Wee, Bantam and Midget with 98 kids registered. We play scheduled games in the North Vancouver Island zone versus teams from Calm River, Comox, Oceanside, Nanaimo, and the Cowichan Valley. There are approximately 1,500 kids playing lacrosse on Vancouver Island this season, with about 700 registered in the Greater Victoria area. And Nanaimo has the largest registration on the North Island with over 300 kids. And the island season runs from March spring training to provincial play downs in July. We hope to grow to 110 kids and six divisions for next season, including a mini tight team of four to five year olds. And we plan to grow the sport with our annual free try it sessions and through school programs. Another way we promote lacrosse and our major fundraising, which brings in eight to $10,000 a year is our annual novice icebreaker tournament hosted on Mother's Day weekend, which we just held recently. Up to 10 teams with close to 200 players apply to attend with their families over two and a half days. Our tournament coordinator, Lindsay Hodgson, reported that between the seven teams and families who stayed in town and the teams who traveled back and forth each day, an estimated $100,000 was brought into the, our community in food and in accommodation, entertainment, and incidentals during the weekend. Ocean, Oceanside Minor Lacrosse hosts the Shark Attack Tyke Lacrosse Tournament every Father's Day with 14 to 20 teams registered for their major fundraising event of the year. The Tykes play cross floor with two games playing on the arena floor at the same time compared to novice at our tournament playing full length, so less teams that you can schedule per hour. Currently we have access to both arenas at the multiplex. However, and please correct me if I'm wrong, we, we have heard that in 2021 the multiplex may consider installing ice year round on one side. And that may be speculation at this point, but those are the, that's the information that we're hearing. So this decision would be quite problematic for minor lacrosse if we are limited to one arena only at the multiplex. 
Even if the grant application for a covered outdoor multi-sport facility is successful and is built in time for the 2021 season, the scheduling pressure on the one remaining floor will greatly restrict our ability to run a successful across season for the kids. Could you show the Williamson Park map, please, Davina? So furthermore, our major fundraiser, the Novice Tournament, will also be in jeopardy due to scheduling logistics. Our plans to increase fundraising efforts and expand participation through hosting provincials will not go ahead, as we would not have enough floor time on the multiplex to schedule the provincial games. The only dates open to us would be needed for our last weekend of regular season home games prior to the multiplex closing for the season near the end of June. So this brings us to our, our first ask of council, and I uh, don't expect a response today. Uh, we ask that a city council liaison be appointed to sit on planning and consultation meetings for the development of any future multi-sport or multi-purpose facilities and lacrosse related discussions to keep council apprised of the status of lacrosse and other youth related sports. This would include attending any meetings to discuss the proposed out covered outdoor lacrosse and pickleball court outlined in the Parks, Recreation and Heritage application for the Williamson Park refresh. And Davina, could you go to the uh, map of ADSS and uh, Wood School? It's farther back. So what we would like to know, if, and, and we previously, previously asked below the question that if the grant application is successful and the grant guidelines permit it, if there is a possibility that the proposed lacrosse and pickleball court be relocated in close proximity to the multiplex to take advantage of nearby student, youth, and school programs, and other community program uses to maximize year-round use of the facility. And will I say we could look at it once we hear on approval of the grant application, so we don't want to get ahead of the game here. But either way, we would support the final decision of council on siting of the facility. And can we go back to the Jarba Recreation Park map? Please, Davina. And our second choice for locating the facility would be Jarba Recreation Park. And that's partly for nostalgia purposes, but also practical purposes because we have the existing gyro lacrosse box there, which is only uh, suitable for uh, uh, practice use right now. We would like to upgrade it to game use eventually. And uh, I've also included letters of support from the Albany Valley Wrestling Club and the Albany Valley Youth Soccer Association for the multi-sport facility concept in general. And I've reached out to other organizations uh, and anecdotally they, they do support uh, anything that uh, benefits youth. So Davina, could you show the kids sport photo for us please? Right there. So our second and final ask is that Mayor and Council consider the kids when making any decisions on planning and development of parks and recreation facilities for community, community use. And show the final picture and on behalf of the Albany Environmental Minor Lacrosse Association and all the kids, I thank you, Mayor and Council, for hearing us today. If there's any questions, I thank you very much. Are there questions from Council? Councillor Corbiel. Yeah, Larry, that uh, that picture of the multiplex, if in fact that's where this uh, facility would go, where where do you think that uh, well, would there's, be a good spot? It would be up to uh, Parks and Rec uh, Department to work. On, find, on figuring out whether it would f be, could be sited there, but there's a few locations uh, in behind the multiplex, um, behind the athletic hall, and also uh, closer to Wood School in proximity to where the current skateboard park is, but that might involve some tree removal and that'd be a decision by council whether or not they're willing to go there. Um, because the logistics of, ru of running an uh, association such as ours and, and the, the issue of maybe having one floor at the multiplex for our use, uh, proximity of another floor would, uh, would certainly help with the logistics of uh, scheduling games and practices, and certainly with hosting tournaments. Uh, and provincials are way, way down the road. Uh, um, we need full, two full facilities uh, with full access uh, through uh, end of June into July to host provincials. So there's some other hurdles to cross before we could get to get to that, but the tournament is the big fundraising event of the year that would be uh, in jeopardy if we uh, don't have a facility in close proximity. Um, logistically, it would be very difficult to run. Uh, we could find a way to do it, maybe streamline the tournament, but it makes it difficult for kids who don't drive to go between one part of town to the other to ref games, and most of our, our referees are kids. 
Thank you. Any other questions from council? Okay. Great. Thank you very much for coming and presenting Thank today. It's been very helpful. Time. Thanks. Okay. On to item E, unfinished business. And the first one we have on our agenda is a notice of motion from Councillor Solda. So I'll let you introduce that. Uh, yes. Oops, sorry. Madam Mayor, I want to move that the Council for the City of Port Alberni direct staff to investigate bylaw provisions in regard to timeless for cleanup or rebuilding burned out properties. Okay, and I'll second that. And if you want to speak to it. Well, we have a number of buildings that have been stagnant and they've been burned out and they've been waiting for development for at least four or five years and they're an eyesore to the community and it's time to move forward and let's put them back to original landscape or build something on that particular property or take it down. Um, I think we're trying to clean up our community and this is a way to move forward and there's buildings that are being repaired and they've been there for like the way they are for repair for at least a year or two years well why aren't we moving forward and and they're right in the middle of our in the city center and that let's clean it up okay. and that's why the motion and there is nothing in our books no bylaws or anything to make this happen so okay. let's create one great other comments or questions councillor corpio well i think a, a good place to start would be to at least um this is with the empty lots to to make contact with the owners um, you know just describing our concerns um, asking where where it makes sense you know are there contamination issues you know I could imagine there's two or three lots that are owned by big oil companies that may not even know they have property in Port Alberni <laughs> and just to give them a, a reminder that you know we know you own this we have a council that's concerned about uh, what the community looks like and do you have any uh, thoughts of selling and if they don't you know maybe we can work with the owner uh, to bring in volunteer groups or, or whatever to try to beautify it it just frustrates the heck out of me the the entrance to Port Alberni on both uh, the south and north port you run right into these empty lots so it gives you kind of a, a lousy first impression of the community so I think that'd be a good place to start, at least just make contact with the owners of these properties. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Poon? Uh, I'll just say that I echo the sentiments of uh, Councillor Solda and Corbeil, and uh, I support the motion. Thank you. I think over there, Councillor Solda. Yeah. And, and Madam Mayor, I remember in the past I've had um, conversations with staff regarding the empty, I guess, lots that are gas stations, were gas stations, and there's a reason why they couldn't move forward on it. The things had to grow to make sure there was no contamination and stuff like that. So I think it was a six year, seven year, they had to wait or something like that in the past. Um, don't quote me on that, but I remember wait, asking wait. that question. And, but this again, this is to investigate and I really want to move forward. I, I think it's time. Some of these buildings need to be back to ground level or something. Yep. So it sounds to me like we're just asking for basically a starting point and some ideas from that's staff. Um, and I see our manager of bylaw just taking notes over there. So I think that's a great start. Um, seeing no more questions or comments, I'll call the question. All in favor? None opposed? Carried. And Councillor Sol your motion on Tofino bus. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, I move that the Council for the City of Port Alberni invite the new owners of Tofino bus to an upcoming council meeting and update their plans on bus service for Port Alberni. Okay, is there a seconder? Second, Madam. Mm -hmm. okay, and so Madam Mayor, for the reason for this mo motion is that the bus service is limited now. It's, you can't get a bus out in the morning and um, there's a lot of people that need appointments in Nanaimo that leave at 8 o'clock in the morning and then they come back at night and now they're going to have to probably stay the night unless they have a ride and it's there's a lot of other things so I think the bus service is getting limited and limited and I'd like to hear from the new owners of Tofino bus. Okay. Councillor Washington did you have a comment or just no okay. Um, and we may, I'll just add that um, I was going to suggest when we get to the BC Transit, um, 
item of our agenda that we actually hold a committee of the whole um, talking about transit in general in our community and, and linking to regional transit as well. So that may be um, what we want to invite them to. Um, and then we can have a larger conversation about it. But I think this is a great start. That's fine, Madam Mayor. Okay, so on the motion, seeing no more comments, all in favor? Carried. And item three. Uh, Madam Mayor, yes, um, I need to remove myself from this next discussion. I've known Lori for many years and she's a friend. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So item three um, from Lori Strickland, we have an appeal to the remedial action of 2808 10th Avenue. And I'll just, do you have any, does our manager or bylaw have anything he wants to add or just if there's questions? Okay, great. Um, are there questions from council on this? Councilor Hedges. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I was just wondering, in one of your reports, you stated that Mrs. Strickland is not a resident of this address. It is her son and several identify, un, unidentified persons. So do you know, is Mrs. Strickland living in the house or has she vacated in can you just clarify that for me, please? Sure, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, Ms. Strickland, uh, in her documents, has advised and in conversations that she is currently residing on the property. Um, so we will assume that is, is true. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this one? Councillor Washington. Thank you. In our, in our package, there are, are pictures dated 22nd of May. Does, has anybody been by there? like today and see if it's been in any improvements or not. I didn't get a chance. Our meeting's been a little too long this morning. Councillor Corbiel. Yeah, I drove by that uh, particular uh, property uh, yesterday afternoon and um, there were probably three shopping carts parked in front of the, the property. You know, there, it's not the worst looking property in Port Alberni, but it, I mean, it does beg the question, you know, how many people drive by with some authority in a day that they don't stop and say, hey, unless your last name is Quality Foods, that probably isn't your shopping cart. And, you know, I would assume that's against the law to be taking shopping carts away from these, uh, these facilities. But I'm kind of torn, as I say, it's not the, I mean, it, it needs a little bit of TLC see certainly but um, you know there I've seen worse manager Bala and mayor if I may um, it is in my report so I can speak to it I just want to respond there there are many properties that that need to be addressed I, th I think the concern for this property as noted in my report is that uh, we're using significant resources um, mm -hmm. I document that in nine months we've hired a contractor and had our bylaw services team out on the property uh, for cleanup purposes seven times out of that, that nine month period. So having two officers, it, it's an ex significant amount of resources being, being used towards one property of many in Port Alberni. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from council? Councilor Washington. So in your professional opinion, she's had enough chances, like we've given her enough time to to get this place cleaned up madam mayor in, in in my opinion on behalf of bylaw services um we'd given up substantial amount of time and i even say right in my report that i sympathize with the circumstances of this property owner it's it, it really is heartbreaking in some ways but uh, there is a standard and uh, it's become clear through our department that our requests aren't being fulfilled, uh, not just in a timely manner, but but overall. So uh, I, I think, in, in my opinion, it's time to do a full remediation, and that way that uh, it'll be maintained at least for several months or maintained there on forward. Yeah, and I just really want to echo um, that, that although I certainly read through the letter and have a lot of compassion for, um, you know, the situation that this person is in, um, I also read through the report um, and see the efforts that the city has made um, to work with the homeowner before it got to this point. Um, so my feeling is strong that we should stay the course on this, um, as difficult as it is on a personal basis. I think, unfortunately, if we don't, um, we're going to just continue to have the same, the same issues. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Poon, would you like to read the motions? Sure. Um, 
Yes, I'll move that the letter from Ms. Strickland dated May 21st, 2019, appealing the decision of Council to declare her property at 2808 10th Avenue as a nuisance property be received. Is there a seconder? Second. And just on receipt of the report, all in favor? Carried. And if you want to continue there. I'll move that the report from the Manager of Bylaw Services dated May 22nd, 2019 be received. Is there a seconder? All in, all in favor? Carried. And I'll move that Council for the City of Port Alberni confirms the remedial action requirement imposed on March 11th, 2019 and directs staff to proceed with remediating 2808 10th Avenue for compliance with City Bylaw Regulations. Second. Okay, and any further questions or comments on this one? Seeing none, all in favor? None opposed, carried. Thank you. And item four from myself, um, request for reconsideration for the Harborview lands. Oh yes, welcome back, Councillor Solda. <laughs> so um, I'll just introduce this one and everybody has the um, report letter there. Um, but I think I just want to apologize for maybe not articulating as clearly as I could have um, at our last meeting how strongly I had heard from members of the community the value um, that those trees and the city retaining control of those trees represented to the community. Um, I know I'm a bit more active on Facebook than some of you, um, so I may sometimes get um, information from the community that you may not, um, and I think I could have brought that forward um, more apparently because to me, um, whether it was on our, whether it was on the city's official post or tons of other posts that were going around social media, I heard overwhelmingly that people wanted the city to protect the trees um, in conversations that I had with community at large um, as well. It was just very apparent um, that people had that desire. So I would like to ask um, that council reconsider um, the motion that was defeated at last council. I believe that the trees really represent significant value to a lot of people in our community. And I really do believe as well that we can find the right development that will balance both um, the value of the trees and the desire that we have to build our tax base. So I will read the motion that the city of Port Alberni retain ownership of the treed portion of the Harborview lands. It, okay, is there a seconder? Any conversation? Councillor Poon. Well, I will say that uh, I did look through social media posts over the last few days and uh, it's true that uh, the community is um, very protective of those trees and uh, I would support this motion. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Haggard? Thank you, Madam Mayor. When I voted against the motion, I was at voting against the trees. I made it very clear in my um, discussion that it was important to put in the RFP how important those trees were to the community to keep the trees. And I have a vision for that, cert that piece of property. And I had some faith and trust that whoever came forward to uh, complete that RFP would have that same vision. However, um, I've been told by other people that maybe I'm a little bit too trustworthy and have too much faith that people would do the right thing and perhaps they wouldn't. So I think this is probably a good opportunity for council to do the right thing and keep those trees. Thank you very much. Any further comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, um, call the question on the motion, all in favor? And any opposed? Carried. Okay, on to staff reports. Um, item one is accounts. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move the certification of Director of Finance dated May 27, 2019 be received in checks numbered 143788 to 143868, inclusive in payments totaling $1,104,973.47 and 47 cents be approved. Is there a seconder? Second, Madam Mayor. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. And item two from the Director of Finance, RCMP Policing Services Surplus. We have a report in front of us from the Director of Finance just um, explaining where that money is coming from and, and kind of the process of those reports. Are there any questions? 
Okay, um, Councillor Haggard, would you like to move receipt of the report? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the report from the Director of Finance dated May 17, 2019 be received. Is there a seconder? Second. So on receipt of the report, all in favor? Carried. And there is a second motion there. Um, Councillor Haggard, if you want to read it and then we'll maybe just speak to it as well. I move that the emergency reserve fund maximum amount be raised from $1 million to $2 million. And I'll second that. Okay, and CAO, wondering if you can just provide a little bit of background. Um, I know it's in the report, but for the benefit of the public, understanding of what this is and, and the rationale for the amount. Sure, Madam Mayor. Um, before we had the reserve fund, uh, when we got um, under expenditures from the RCMP, um, Council would receive those funds mid-year, <clears throat> sometimes allocate them, sometimes reserve them. And then uh, we established, Council of the Day established a reserve fund in which the um, under expenditures of the RCMP would be reserved for, um, for emergency purposes. Um, and the biggest one would likely be a, a, a very uh, in-depth, expensive investigation, let's say a murder or something like that, um, <clears throat> for which the city would be on the hook for the cost. And so we established a, um, a reserve fund with a cap of $1 million, and that fund accumulated over several years and reached the cap. Two years ago, I believe, um, we council made the decision to underfund, because we were getting these, these under expenditures every year, council um, essentially underfunded uh, the police budget by the equivalent cost of two officers, anticipating that we were going to get that much um, or more as an under expenditure each year. And, um, but, and when we did that, um, staff advised council that if we're going to do that, we run the risk of being, being underfunded in any one year if, for example, we don't have any vacancies. And so we suggested that we allow any expendit uh, under expenditures um, year to year to continue to go into the reserve fund and essentially move the cap up from $1 million to $2 million. Council um, had discussion about that in the budget process that year, um, agreed to to uh, essentially that um, strategy, but never actually made a motion on the on the raising the cap. In I believe uh, 2017, we did add 85 thousand dollars to that reserve, uh, even though there's not an actual motion, as um, says in the report. And um, at this point, because council's already asked for a report on the under expenditure, staff thought this is a good time to ask council to actually make a motion to move the cap to two million dollars. Thank you for that. Okay. Are there any questions, Councillor Washington? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I don't mean to put the CAO on the spot, um, but if, is there any investigations that have happened in sort of lately that we can sort of see that the cost would be like for say the well, I, I don't know if when the when they had that bomb scare over on seventh was there was there an investigation and do you got any idea of the cost yeah. of that just to sort of put the how much it can cost for an investigation? In my time in this role, we've not tapped that account. And uh, so the, the bomb scare that you mentioned, um, that's been funded out of just the, um, the, the, uh, that, that year's budget. Um, I'm gonna ask the Director of Finance if she has any insight into what the, what the top end cost could be for an investigation. She may or she may not. And we yeah, may have to ask, no, no, you're right. right. And if, if Ms. Rothwell doesn't have that information, we may need to refer it to the inspector. I don't have exact figures, but the conversation arose from a homicide investigation. I think it was in Campbell River that reached about $2 million and Campbell River had to pay the bill. So we thought we'd be prudent and Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Corbiel. I guess I just want some clarity on what this motion means. Uh, uh, I have no problem with uh, uh, raising the uh, the maximum amount to $2 million. But is this motion saying that that $951,648 would be put into that fund? If, if that was the case, I'd be against it, but I'd certainly be in favor of uh, increasing the size of that fund. So CAO, do you want to maybe, um, I, I don't read this motion as that, although I think that would be the natural place for this money to go. Um, but maybe if you want to clarify, or the Director of Finance may want to, um, this is not a statutory fund. It's a fund that we can use for other initiatives if we choose to. 
I'm going to ask the director of finance to speak to that. Sure. Um, but I, and, and while she's coming up, I'll tell you that that figure, as I understand it, came from an RCMP report. Yeah. I don't know that the director has confirmed that number. Also, um, as I just mentioned earlier, we, have un we underfund by about $360,000 each year. So that would come off of that. Um, we're also exposed um, because of the cycle of, of, of labor contracts or um, salary awards, if you like, to the, to the RCMP. We're, I believe, a couple of years into retroactivity, and we think we'll be somewhere between $100,000 and $200,000 in retro. Um, that we, we don't know if that'll happen this year or next. So there, there are some unknown costs, um, and it's very prudent to hold some reserve funds for those. Thank you. I think the intent of the motion is to cap the reserve fund at 200000 and we could build it up gradually. We wouldn't have to take the whole um, 2019 surplus. And that is a preliminary surplus. They haven't done their final year end, which doesn't happen until about July. And then we get a statement from them that shows what exactly that surplus is for the year. Thank you. So when we get that um, final number, we can have more of a conversation around um, what will be done with that, those funds. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Poon. Sorry, I'm confused. 200,000 cap for what? 2 million, I think oh, she okay. think that was an okay. error. Okay. Did okay. I say 200,000? Yeah. <laughs> we heard 2 million. <laughs> we knew you meant 2 million. <laughs> missing a zero. <laughs> Were there any further questions, yes. Councillor Solda? When, when that million dollar cap was put on, uh, uh, um, that was during my time when I was on council in the past, and it was a million dollars in Campbell River when they got the bill, and I just thought it was a great time to do that here because we can't afford to suddenly say, hey, we've got a million dollars somewhere, and um, so the cap was put on. But we never took a million, like the whole amount that we got from the RCMP, it was in increments, right, whatever we could afford to, to build that fund. Well, we had um, surpluses of a few hundred thousand, so That's I think right. it took us three and a half years to, to make them. Mm -hmm. and even one two, million. <laughs> and even $2 million is not going to be enough if there's an investigation because it's, times have changed. Do we know any other communities that have had um, bills sent to them? I, don't, I haven't heard of anything right now, but um, mm -hmm. on investigations? Do no, you know? and I would defer to OIC Inspector. Brian Hunter on that. Okay, thank you. I totally support this. Thank you, um, Councillor Poon. So, if we if we bump it up to two million, does the nine hundred and fifty one thousand dollars go fully into the emergency reserve fund, or can we utilize uh, part of that uh, surplus uh, for other projects? Part of it is committed already to the underfunding of the two officers to about 360,000. So there would be approximately 600,000 left over. You want to probably leave a bit of a cushion. Um, it just depends what the final number comes out to, and then we can. Yeah. It would be easier to recommend. And with again, some real numbers. We will have that conversation when we get the final number. Um, we don't have to make that decision today. We're just talking about raising the cap today. Yeah. And we could do it at $200,000 per year for five years or yeah. we, however council yeah. wishes. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I just want to comment that um, I certainly agree with raising the cap. Um, I also think that we should not put all of the money that comes back um, into the reserve. I think that um, we can sit around and wait um, for a murder to happen in our community and hopefully that never happens, but we have a, um, crime problem in our community now, and I think that we can also use um, some of these funds um, to, to invest proactively in programs um, and initiatives that hopefully will make it so that we never have to expend those funds on a murder. So um, looking forward to having that conversation when we get a final number. Um, I think it's, it could be a really good opportunity for us to invest in some public safety initiatives. Okay, thank you very much. Um, did we make them? I think we made the motion to, yeah, great. So motion on the floor, all in favor, carried. And another report from the director of finance, <laughs> the equipment replacement reserve fund sustainability. Um, thank you for this report. The only thing that I noted is I don't think the graph that was referenced was actually in the report. So I'm not sure if, um, we have it or not. Um, so maybe if we could just, I know you referenced in, in your report um, 
a graph that was attached. So maybe if that could just be sent around to council in in the future. I could do that. Um, this report was, um, I was hoping to go into it a little bit further and I had printed a couple of graphs for discussion purposes, Great. but um, anyway, my bad, sorry. Sure, no, no, that's fine. Um, I think it would just be valuable for council to see in the future. CAO. Madam Mayor, the, the graphs exist. They're very, um, they're very helpful. Um, and if council will um, um, let us move forward in the agenda, we'll find those and bring them back later in the meeting, if, okay. if that's okay. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Thank I you. think it'd be good okay. to see them. Okay, so we'll skip over this item for now. We'll come back to it. Don't let me forget to come back to it. <laughs> okay, um, and item F4 from our city clerk upcoming meetings and procedures and I've somewhat added on to this um, a discussion about how we're moving forward um, on the cannabis as well. Um, City Clerk. Thank you Madam Mayor. Um, this report essentially is um, asking Council's consideration um, in regards to a couple of meetings that we have scheduled in, in June. Um, we find ourselves in the position of having some um, staffing challenges uh, due to vacation and uh, and some some vacant role, um, so we're asking that council would consider uh, cancelling the June 17th committee of the whole meeting, as we just won't be able to resource it. Um, and also, we're asking if, um, in regards to the June 24th council meeting, um, our agendas are required uh, in our procedures bylaw to be made available and distributed to the public by 5 p.m. on the Thursday prior to the meeting. And uh, because of the challenges that we have at that time, we're asking if um, council will waive that provision. Um, we will certainly try and meet that, but um, it may be the Friday before we, we get the agenda distributed. Okay. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Solda. I have no questions, Madam Mayor, but I just want to move that the, the June 17th, 2019 Committee of the Whole meeting be cancelled and that the Council for the City of Port O'Burney waive the provisions of Section 15.3 of Council's Procedure Bylaw for June 24th regular meeting. Okay, is there a seconder? Second, Madam Mayor. Great. Um, okay, so on this, I have no issue um, cancelling the June Committee of the Whole, um, recognizing that um, we have some out-of-the-norm circumstances um, with staffing, um, and certainly as well the um, notice period for that meeting. Um, but I do think that we should um, be having a brief conversation about how we're moving forward and when for cannabis cultivation. Um, I know that when we had our original Committee of the Whole about cannabis, Mr. Brevik did come and say, you're missing half the issue, you're only talking about retail stores, you're not talking about cultivation. And that was about six months ago. And um, he's been waiting reasonably patiently since, um, which is challenging when you, you know, are partway through an investment and trying to get your approvals in line. Um, I definitely have some concern about the upcoming um, federal election and possible changes and I don't want us to cause um, I don't want us to you know cause um, challenges by delaying so I'm wondering how the rest of council feels about how we should be moving forward with cannabis Councillor Corbiel Madam Mayor I totally agree with you um, I think the the time has come that we have a committee of the whole meeting to to talk about this this issue and um, you know Mr. Reverick is, is one individual who's been waiting patiently. We hear through the grapevine there may be others and uh, you know unless we get our act together people may move to other communities so I totally agree with you. The, the time has come and as soon as we can schedule a community, committee of the whole meeting I think we should. Other questions, comments? Councillor Haggard? May we ask the city clerk when would be the earliest date that we could have our next committee of the whole meeting? Uh, we do have one in, scheduled in July, Madam Mayor. I think the, it would be July the 15th would be the next committee of the whole scheduled date. Um, and it's probably the first available date, really. Any other comments or questions? CAO? Madam Mayor, at the May 13th meeting, Council directed to staff to investigate, um, essentially to undertake a process. And um, staff are working on a report for you 
um, that will that will suggest the process that will that will um, take public input. You also directed that uh, we we consult with the community and First Nations as a priority. Um, if council wants to have a committee of the whole meeting as part of that process, you can decide that now, or you can wait for the staff report and have that conversation then. Um, it may or may not be the best vehicle on, given it worked very well on retail, mm -hmm. um, it may not be the best vehicle to discuss um, on cultivation. Do we have a rough timeline on when we would have a uh, have that report back? I do not. I know it's in process. Could we, um, I'm just, I don't want us to go beyond what could be the committee of the whole date, so I'm wondering um, mm -hmm. if we could get kind of a, if we can get a timeline on when we would have the report. And I agree, it doesn't need to be a committee of the whole. Um, I think that did work very well for cannabis retail. Um, but given that we have had a lot of conversation in the community about cannabis in general now, I think um, a report may be enough if that would be sooner. If you want to, um, to tentatively schedule that meeting or hard set it now, council can do either. Um, it's up to you. I'm just, I just want you to know that you've already given direction and staff are following that direction. If you want to um, clarify that, inf that direction to include a committee of the whole, you can do that. How does council feel about the need for a committee of the whole? Madam Mayor, um, while well, I know our audience member is not happy about the take and see his body language over there is telling him, Ugh. Um, do we need to take it to a committee of a whole? We can't bring it back to a to. meeting. Yep. So I, I think that might be faster instead of waiting till July. Um, if the report can be somewhat put together somehow, you know, for our next meeting or something like that, I don't know. I need it's up to you, Madam Mayor. CAO, what's the likelihood of the report being ready for our next meeting? I, th I think you'll see a report. If not at the next meeting, you'll see a report at the second meeting in June. I, I know it's being worked on right now. And, and that is just a report that's going to say, here's a process that we think is, will engage the public and First Nations, as Council has directed, on the topic of cultivation of cannabis uh, uh, and what zoning um, should, should uh, be enabled to cultivate cannabis. It, so this isn't about... The specific, about Mr. Brevik's yeah. application. Yeah. So as a part of Mr. Brevik's application, would we not have a public hearing? Um, the, Mr. Brevik's application has gone to um, advisory planning already. Yeah. They recommended to council that you not move on his application, that instead you look at the broader issue of where do you think um, cannabis cultivation should take place in the municipality. And staff agreed with that recommendation. Council um, agreed as well and directed staff to come back with a report. On Thank what you. A that part I do report. remember. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but would, as a natural part of his application, would we have a public hearing? Yes. Yeah, so I'm just wondering, do we need to overcomplicate our process, um, or does the community have all of the opportunity to give input at a public hearing as part of the regular process if we were to move forward? As part of the public hearing, Madam Mayor, that would be site-specific for Mr. Brevik's application only, yes. so it wouldn't be in consideration of, of mm -hmm. any other sites mm -hmm. or potential sites in the, in the community. It I'm just wondering, specifically for his. I'm just wondering if we could move forward with these two processes um, at the same time, like we did um, with the fence variance application at the same time as we were moving forward um, with an amendment to our fence bylaw. We made that decision even though we um, expected that there would be more changes coming forward. We looked at that on a one-off and comments were made from this council that they didn't think it was fair to make the applicant of the variance, the fence vari variance, wait until we went through our process. So these situations seem similar to me and I'm wondering if we can work on the two processes alongside each other. Madam Mayor, the, the two in that similarity, um, the difference I would say there is that the Advisory Planning Committee recommended that you do that. In this case, they recommend that you do not consider them concurrently. If Council wants to, that's just a recommendation. If you want to move on both at the same time, you are able to do that. So I have Councillor Poon and then Councillor Solda. That's right. I would support <laughs> moving on both at the same time. Councillor Solda? I don't have a, a problem with moving on the same time, but what if we did one first and then went to a public hearing on the second? Right? We have our discussion um, about the cannabis, uh, where we're going to, you know, because we're talking 
about sites and where we want to where it wants to go and then we have a public hearing on the application that's coming in because we've already had a discussion where what the staff's going to bring back now we go to the next step instead of talking about them both at the same time I think what staff's going to bring back is a recommended process so steps okay. for us to take which I think the applicant that we have currently is concerned that that process is going to be too time consuming um, for him to reasonably mm -hmm. move forward. Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would rather go slow with this particular topic. It's just because it's such unknown territory that we're walking in. I want to make sure that we go a little bit slower to make sure that we do the right thing and not regret it in a year down the road or year, two years down the road. And my, I don't want to slow down anybody that's trying to start a business. That's not what I'm trying to do. But with this particular topic, I, I would rather go, go slower okay. and go through the processes. Councillor Washington. But we can have the two processes separately, but we can do it at regular council meetings so we don't have to wait till the third Monday in July for a committee of the whole meeting. Like as soon as that report's ready, it can be presented to council at a regular council meeting, then we can move forward. Yeah, and, and maybe CAO can clarify what we should expect from that report because my concern is the report is not going to tell us, um, yeah, we can move forward with cannabis in these areas. The report is going to be an outline of next steps and public process. It's not going to get us to a point where we could consider the application that we have. Is that correct? The, the report will, you're right, it will, t it will recommend to council a process that we can undertake so you can make a, an informed decision on, and a consulted de decision on which zoning you want to see cannabis cultivation um, to take place in, if at all. So that's, that's what the report is going to be, yes. So it will, as I think we just have to be make sure that we are aware that it will, um, we're not going to get this report at the end of June and then be ready to move forward with applications. It will be a reasonably significant process still. Councillor um, Corbeil, do you have any comments? Um, well, as Councillor Haggard says, uh, you know, we should move slowly, but I, I think we have been moving slowly. And um, I, I would, you know, I'll, I'll trust the CAO that that report uh, hopefully is done in, in the next uh, month or so and maybe there won't be a need for the committee of the whole but um, yeah it seems like it's been a long drawn out process and I can understand the the concern of uh, Mr. Brevrick waiting and a lot of things are you're probably balancing a lot of balls waiting for a decision here I know so we do have a motion on the table um, just about the June um, the June Committee of the Whole and the waive the provision of Section 15.3 um, for Council for our tw June 24th regular meeting. Um, so I think we should call the question on that and then if anyone wants to make a motion um, for the specific application, um, we can move to that next. So on the motion that we have currently, all in favor? Carried. And would anyone like to make a motion um, regarding path forward on the other application and if not we'll be just moving forward um, with waiting for the report at the end of June and then seeing where that takes us for process I'm seeing no one jumping but kind of Councillor Washington we didn't we weren't really clear with the CEO what the timeline was on that report though is it gonna take a month so I yeah. just, I just, as soon as the report's done, I, I'd like to see it on the agenda. Is, is, yeah. is my hope and dream. So, yeah. I didn't know if that needed a motion or not. Yeah, and I don't think that does need a motion. Um, I will just say that I do have concern about um, waiting a month for a report, and then that report is just the starting process. I think we're discouraging this industry in our community, and as much as, you know, we, I think we should naturally want to proceed with caution. Um, on the cannabis industry that is new. I think we also have to recognize that it is a legal substance now and um, it may be you know, somewhat scary and unknown to us at this point. Um, it also is, it, we really do need to look at it as just, just any other business. Um, so I think that we can follow a proper process going through a public hearing and allowing input. Um, so I think I will make the motion 
motion that um, we proceed with um, the app site specific application that we had um, alongside of going through the additional process that the report will bring us. I'll You'll have that. to wordsmith that because that's a horrible motion. <laughs> okay, um, any further questions or comments on this? Councillor Washington. I, I just don't want to see us being the council that discourages. I, I, I realize it's all new to us, but we went, council of the past went through the, the dispensaries, the medical dispensaries, and it sort of turned out okay, and uh, it took care of itself. But I mean, if it was a microbrewery, we'd, we'd be, he'd have his vats in by now. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we just got to get him going because he, he'll start somewhere. For sure, and important to note also that we may go through this process and the public hearing, um, and we may hear concern from the public that they're not ready for us to move forward yet. So um, this is not an approval, it's just to keep the process continuing, yeah. Um, so call the question on that motion, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Okay, and item five from our economic development manager. There he is. Uh, come on forward, Pat. Um, Council resolution for UBCM um, housing needs report program. And before we get to this, um, I just want to take a minute to thank you and the cruise ship committee and the chamber and the port um, and all of the volunteers who did just an absolutely incredible job this weekend. Um, I spent quite a few hours down there when the cruise ship came and just was so blown away by how hard everyone was working and the positive comments I heard from tourists. It was reinvigorating to hear um, how much people loved and enjoyed our community. So thanks for all that you did on that. Yeah. Thank you. May I add a few? Absolutely. Uh, comments. Uh, so uh, what we heard from the passengers was, uh, and this is, was uh, day 19 of a 21 day itinerary for them. Uh, they said it was the best welcome uh, that they'd received in any community. It was the only Canadian city where the Mounties turned out in red surge. And um, as, as the mayor said, I mean, we had a lot of people out supporting uh, the day and uh, the festivities. And so we're very grateful it, it ranged from uh, the Port Alberni uh, Army of Problem Solvers who were uh, mowing lawns and putting up uh, uh, tarps over some eyesores to uh, First Nation welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, the canoe went out. Uh, the uh, dancing was there. Um, uh, we had uh, city workers who invested a lot of time and energy in uh, preparation and and did so proudly uh, the cruise line itself is uh, what we were taught by Aquila is our customer and um, so uh, we're anxiously awaiting the results of the survey that they do on board 84 percent of the passengers got off the ship Wow. Um, huh. And almost 100 uh, crew members. So uh, we're looking forward to that uh, feedback. Uh, the ship's agent did say, uh, sent us a, a text after the ship left uh, saying the, the community, the city, the Port Authority did a, uh, an amazing job and everyone was very happy with uh, the day. So we're thrilled uh, so far we are doing a questionnaire we're sending it around to all the members of the uh, committee we're sending it out to the uh, vendors uh, we're sending it out to the merchants um, i will be uh, and this is by way of serving notice asking councillor haggard to go back to the major industries that you visited in advance of the visit to uh, just check to see what comments they might have as well. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from Council on the cruise ships? Can I just second yes. what you said, Madam Mayor? It was an amazing day, and yeah. thank you so much for all your hard work. I really appreciate what you've yeah. done for this community. Yeah, absolutely. Councillor Poon? 
Um, of the cruise ship passengers, did you hear about anyone wanting to invest in our community? I did. <laughs> so uh, the mayor uh, and some members of the Port Authority board and a representative from each of the two First Nations were on uh, board. Uh, the mayor did hear uh, some requests. Kim McRae, who's on the board of the Port Authority, also heard. He said I was busy handing out cards uh, from people, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll add to that as well that I heard um, quite a few people um, say that they were intending to come back and visit Port Alberni again. So, um, and uh, several people um, who commented that, that they um, use their cruises as a way to kind of decide where, which communities they're gonna visit for additional stays. And um, that I heard loud and clear that a lot of people were intending to come back for longer stays. So I think it was a huge success. Yeah, yeah and that is something that uh, both Aquila and the cruise lines uh, touted was that uh, really, uh, it's an opportunity to put your best foot forward uh, because people will come back uh, to the destinations. And I, um, I think uh, probably the last word for me was on uh, the way up the stairs uh, to a council meeting here, I ran into Jillian Shearwater, uh, who is uh, a member of uh, the Jane Austen uh, troop and uh, Jillian was down there for the entire day and uh, I just uh, thanked her for their effort uh, to it because I know a lot of people were fascinated by it and I said uh, any comments and uh, she said oddly enough every comment I heard was positive mm -hmm. it was like <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. To hear that was uh, quite something. Yeah, one person did say to me, though, the only somewhat negative comment I heard was it was very cold in the morning. Of course, it was rainy and windy and quite awful weather for the first few hours. Um, a gentleman I was talking to when I got on the ship kind of laughed and he said, we've been all over a lot. I said, it does get sunny here. Like it was really hot yesterday. And he's like, oh, sure it was. And uh, he said, we've been all over Alaska and this is the coldest place I've been. <laughs> We uh, promised him it was going to be sunny the next day. So. Yeah. Uh, and we're fortunate that we've got uh, uh, two more uh, yeah. uh, swings at the ball yeah. uh, in, in the coming months. I, and um, we did uh, get a bit of feedback about opportunities to improve, so mm -hmm. we're already working on that. Great. Thank you. So seeing no more questions or comments on that, um, your report is uh, uh, asking for a council resolution for the UBCM housing needs report. Does anyone have questions on this? Okay. Yeah, I'm excited to see this on the agenda and thanks for um, working with, um, of course it's Shyla um, Somnia. Oh, I now I can't say her last name, but it's Shyla um, who is really excited and passionate about pursuing this. So um, with support from your department, yep. um, seeing, oh, Councillor Corbio. And I just want to say that this is a real natural fit to work with the uh, age uh, friendly assessment that Shyla is working on. So you know, I'm totally in favor of this motion and I think it's mm -hmm. going to be a positive thing for our, for our community. That's great. It is uh, definitely that, and um, as of April 19th, uh, uh, it became a requirement of municipalities to yes. do this uh, housing needs assessment every five years. Mm -hmm. So uh, represents an opportunity for us to get a start on it. No guarantee that we'll get uh, the funding out of the chute, but the application is strong, uh, there, uh, so we'll put it forward. Great. Councillor yep. Corbiel, would you like to read the motion? Yes, Madam Mayor, I'd like to move that the Council for the City of Port Alberni support the proposal 2019 Port Alberni, am I on the right one? Yes, Collaborative Housing Needs Assessment and provide overall grant management for the project. Second, Madam Mayor. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, and item six from our Director of Finance, we have the Climate Action Revenue Incentive Program Report. Are there any questions on this? Seeing none, Councillor Solda, would you like to read the motion? Madam Mayor, I move that the report from the Director of Finance dated May 22, 2019 be received and the Council for the City of Port Alberni approve the Climate Action Re Revenue Incentive Report as produced under the Climate Action Revenue Incentive Program for the year of 2018. Is there a seconder? Second, Madam Mayor. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Madam Mayor, we City can go back to the IRF report. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so back to the IRF report, um, item three. And do we have that graph? Lovely. So maybe our director of finance could just explain the graph. <laughs> Okay, um, we start in 07 and end in 2031. Um, one of my comments in the report, I think, was we need to project it out further, but time was of the essence to get the report <laughs> in front of council. But you can see um, at the red line is the target fund balance, which is one third of the estimated fleet value. And the blue line is where our earth reserve um, fluctuates um, from year to year and you can see it takes a hit 21 and 22 because we've got back-to-back -back fire trucks um, we've got some significant expenses in um, public works replacement um, and then it builds for a little while and then in 2031 we've got another 500,000 or so um, no it's a million dollars sorry um, our earth fund is projected out to 2031 with the, with the estimated um, equipment replacements. That is a moving figure because every year we look at whether we can extend the life of, um, say, a dump truck. It's slated to be um, be replaced, but it's you know our our mechanical superintendent looks at it. Oh no, it's got another couple of years left in it or we get the underwriters to look at the fire trucks and sometimes they extend us another five years. So it does move around and we continue to put, um, make the contributions to Earth. Okay, okay. And you just, um, you made a comment that it would be nice to project it out further. Um, yes. Obviously we do take a hit because of, you know, some significant purchases. Is your feeling that if we projected it out further, we would see those lines getting closer back together? Um, or can you not speak to it without <laughs> actually doing that work? I'm just wondering if this looks pretty out of the norm with the, um, the drop that it takes in 2021. Um, yeah, it is because the underwriters did yeah. extend the lives of both the fire trucks. And, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I expect some growth after 2031 because we've got some major purchases sort of bunched together in that okay. five or six years. Okay. Um, but I won't say for sure, but I do sure. expect it to grow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a couple of other things that I referred to in my report is more research, I think, needs to be done with what is the, um, I say, gold standard or maybe industry norm with the fleet value as opposed to the earth fund, because I don't know if 33%, that may be high now, okay. maybe low, okay. I don't know. Okay, thank you. So. Are there questions from Council? Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Who would um, undertake that research and try and determine what that standard would be? Would that be you or somebody from Public Works? Or? That would be me. Okay. <laughs> and I would work collaboratively, collaboratively with Public Works. Because, I think that would be great information yeah. to have on yeah. file just so that we know and can plan better. Yeah, please don't ask for it for the next council meeting. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's going to take At a little while. At some point Two down yeah. the road it's, would be fine. Yeah, it'd be fairly in-depth, in depth, and it would require um, some research and, you know, into other municipalities, what does the province do, what do the feds do, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, I'd really like to have a really good um, report for you to be able to make an informed decision. Okay, that's great. Councillor Corbeil. When the underwriters uh, give an extra five years or something to a, to a fire truck, has there been any uh, re refurbishment or is it just they look at it and say, well, based on the miles and 
hours and whatnot, it's good for five more years. I defer to the CAO on that one. <laughs> CAO. Madam Mayor, yes, good question. We, um, we spent, uh, I would say, less than $20,000 refurbing our ladder truck and got an extra five years out of it. So yes, um, it, it took some updating. And that's the last five years we'll get out of that vehicle. So we pushed our ladder truck five years beyond and we pushed our engines as well. So um, the, the drop you're seeing there, um, you know, while it might, you might want to blame it on two, two fire apparatus, I would suggest that the reason we were above the line is because we, we extended the lives of those pieces of equipment and others. And um, yeah, and so now, but you push things out, eventually you got to replace them, right? Yeah. But yes, we did refurbish. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Poon. Question for CAO. Um, could the, could we buy a used truck and then refurb it for 20,000 then? Hmm. I think that's a great question for the fire chief, and uh, <laughs> and we'll make sure that he. Uh, oh come on, <laughs> he's the expert, so we'll we'll ask the fire chief that. Thank you, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, since we're asking the fire chief that, um, our trucks, they go in. Do we take those in? Do they take them in on trade, and are they refurbished? Do they for, for further refurbish them and then resell them, or do they? sell them to a community that doesn't need underwriters second one well sometimes both so um, engines often um, get sold for scrap if you like um, and because they don't have a value after 30 years and um, although if if a community just needs a couple years out of a vehicle and they don't need the underwriters to approve it they might use that um, Sproul Lake's got one like that right now I think that they um, they brought in to fill a gap while their new engines coming and um, on ladder trucks, oftentimes they get refurbished and repurposed. So our, our ladder's been really well maintained. Um, and so the aerial apparatus part of it's really good. Um, the underwriters won't recognize the pumping capacity of it anymore. They've already given us a five-year extension. So that, that unit may end up somewhere that doesn't need the, to rely on the pumping capacity for underwriters. But we don't have an option. Or we would see our insurance um, premiums change. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillor Solta? Um, and I just wanted to comment that reading through the report, um, what was really concerning to me is um, that the equipment replacement reserve had been dipped into several times. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was like $2.5 million had been pulled out of it over um, a, yes. few, a couple councils ago. Yeah. Um, we can blame these two. <laughs> kidding, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> um, but, you know, over time, and I think that, <laughs> I think you were on that council. Um, I, I think that um, I'm glad that we haven't done that um, in recent years and I think that when we look at this graph it um, becomes very apparent that that is not um, good practice for us to be um, to, for us to be working with so um, it is you know we may be in a position where we need to increase um, those rates to um, increase the contributions because of draws from the past and I think that um, It'll be great to see when more information on, on what the standards are going forward. But um, yeah, I think just as a matter of practice, we want to make sure we're not dipping out of this for things that um, are not equipment replacement, mm -hmm. that are not contributed to for it. So thank you very much for the report. Um, are there, there's no questions additional? Okay, would somebody like to move or see the other report? Madam Mayor. That the report from the Director of Finance dated May 21st, 2019 be received. Second, Madam Mayor. All in favor. Carried. And item seven, manager's report um, from the Director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You have my monthly report in front of you there. I also just wanted to bring to your attention a quick follow-up uh, from a previous meeting of council related to the community investment program and the community forest. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Sears as well as a few of the members of the community forest. We had the opportunity to review the CIP process for the coming 2020 cycle as well as uh, suitable projects for that fund. So just to That's apprise great. council. Great. And I'd be happy Thank to you. answer any questions you might Thank have. You. Are there any questions of the report? Councillor Corbeil. Yes, just uh, just for clarity, I'm the uh, the city liaison on the community forest, and I'm just trying to get a handle on. Um, so I think it was several months ago, Mr. Sears 
uh, gave the city a dividend check for $150,000. That goes into a fund, a legacy fund, uh, I believe. And now there, there's the small donations program where uh, $10,000 I'm not sure, is it coming from the community force or is it coming out of that legacy fund will be earmarked for small related projects. And it wasn't too terribly long ago, somebody had an idea that seemed to be you know, an appropriate uh, opportunity for the community force to donate to it. But I take it that the, the community investment program meets several times a year and maybe they missed the, that window of opportunity. So, Madam Mayor, a variety of questions, I think, Aaron. So I'll, I'll defer to the city clerk or CAO as far as the, the legacy fund versus the, uh, the, the $10,000 fund, just to confirm the, the division of funds there. So I, we probably don't need that right away. Um, it was a pretty recent um, change that we implemented that. So, and I can't remember specifically if it came out of the legacy fund or, but um, we can get that information and bring it back to council for sure. Have you found it? Madam Mayor, I, don't, I, I can't find it in front of me, but I checked sure. it after our previous meeting and um, the, the money comes from the reserve fund. Okay. Okay, great. So the, the legacy reserve fund. I okay. believe that's what we're calling it. Wonderful. The, the money that we've already got from previous yeah. dividends. Okay. Yes. Great. And just to clarify, Madam Mayor, on meeting frequency with the community investment uh, program that, of course, Councillor Poon is, is a member of, uh, typically we meet in the fall each year to review the coming cycle. So the, the application deadline, we've moved back to give uh, applicants the greatest amount of time possible uh, to apply. So that application deadline is currently open, um, or the application process is open. The deadline is November the 1st, uh, as opposed to previously, it's been in October uh, for the, the coming year. Um, and so what the community typically meets uh, a variety of times, depending on how long it takes for the, the committee to work through all the applications with the goal that all funds are available to be distributed by council at the first meeting in December for the following year. In the event that there's uh, late applications, uh, as Madam Mayor, you mentioned earlier in this meeting, we do typically hold back a small number of funds in the event that there's a new project that comes to light that the committee wishes to support. So um, as opposed to previous applicants that know the process well, we, we don't typically support late applicants that have already gone through the process, that they, they're they well-versed and uh, and well-practiced. So we expect those folks to, uh, to apply online, uh, on time, excuse me. And so uh, when there are new new applications that do come in, they are considered essentially on the fly as we go. So if it's a case of, uh, we often communicate electronically so that we're, we have the opportunity to respond to new uh, requests as they come in through the year. That's good to know, thank you. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we had a speaker this morning, Mr. Ransom was speaking earlier this afternoon and was worried about ICE in 2021. Is is that something you wish to comment on now or, or you can't comment on or? Uh, well, Madam Mayor, uh, that's the first time I've, I've heard that information. Uh, I think that uh, exploring the opportunity for year-round ice is prudent business operation. So I think it's definitely a discussion that the Parks, Recreation and Heritage Department wants to have. At this stage, there's no commitment to running year-round ice at our multiplex. Okay. That's good to hear. Um, and do you want to also comment on the grant application that was submitted, um, assuming we haven't heard back from that? Correct. So, Madam Mayor, uh, as I mentioned, when I first presented uh, the application or that we, we would be applying and, and receiving council's blessing for that, uh, we're not slated to hear until the end of 2019. Okay. It's been quite a vague timeline. There's no actual specific date at this stage that, uh, that the governments have indicated when those funds will be available. <laughs> so I'm just told uh, late 2019. We have a feeling we know when we'll hear. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, seeing no, oh, Councillor Haggard. <laughs> well, I just want to congratulate you and your team on a very successful community wellness fair. Lots of yes. vendors and lots of people attended this year and it was just a great event. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, great. And Councillor Haggard, would you like to move receipt of the report? I would like to move that the monthly report from the Director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage providing information about current de departmental operations be received. Great. Is there a seconder? Second, Madam Mayor. Okay, and seeing no more questions, all in favor? Carried. Thank you very much, Director Thorpe. 
And on to bylaws. And our first item from our city clerk is the May 13th, 2019 public hearing report. And we have the report in front of us. Are there any questions from council? <coughs> Okay, seeing none. Um, one question that I did have, um, and I know that our manager of planning is away today. Um, there was some conversation at that public hearing about um, the recommendation that was made to for the applicant, one of the applicants, to connect to city sewer. But I wasn't clear if um, how we moved forward was making that a requirement or if that would be talked about separately. So I think we were a bit vague in that. That was definitely the report that came forward from the um, Advisory Planning Commission, but I wasn't sure if we were moving forward endorsing that recommendation or if there was more discussion to come. I'm not sure if... Um, Madam Mayor, my understanding from our uh, Manager of Planning is, is that um, consideration would be made as part of the subdivision process. Okay. So, um, and you know, the bylaws won't come back for, for adoption until conditions are met, but um, at a later date, that would be a consideration. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, seeing no other questions, Councillor Washington, would you like to move receipt? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the report of the public hearing held May 13th, 2019, regarding bylaws number 4985, 4986, and 4987 be received. Great. Is there a seconder? Second, Madam Mayor. Okay, and seeing no questions. All in favor? Carried. And item two, we have official community plan amendment number 27 for 2940 Bells Hill Road, Carrier, bylaw number 4985. And this is third reading. Councillor Poon, would you like to read that motion? Yes, I'll move that, uh, that official community plan amendment number 27, 2940 Bells Hill Road, Carrier, bylaw number 4985 be read a third time. Second, and are there any questions on this application? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. And Council, Councillor Poon, if you want to continue yes. with the next one. I'll move that zoning bylaw map amendment number 32, 2940 Bells Hill Road, Carrier, bylaw number 4986 be read a third time. Second, Madam And any questions on this one? All in favor? Carried. And item three from the same public hearing, we have zoning bylaw map amendment number 33 for 3512 Gagne Road, Burrell, bylaw number 4987. Councillor Corbeil, would you like to read this one? Yes, Madam Mayor, I'd like to move that the zoning bylaw map amendment number 33, 3512 Gagne Road, Burrell, bylaw number 4987 be read a third time. Is there a seconder? Second, Madam Mayor. And any questions or comments on this application? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. That brings us to correspondence for action. And our first item is the um, 2019 to 2020 annual operating agreement for BC Transit. Are there any questions <laughs> on the report and agreement? Councillor Corbiel. Yeah, one thing I, I couldn't find in the report was the, um, oh, geez, now I forget the name of it, the, uh, the bus that goes around to Echo Village, the Handy Dart bus. Is that a separate contract or is that part of the same contract? Director of Finance. I wanted to speak to um, the annual operating agreement as well, if great. you don't mind. Absolutely. Because it's the first one that this council has seen. So that's great. Um, as for the handy dart, um, the BC Transit contracts with the regional district for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, perfect. And if you want to speak to the contract, that's great. Okay. Um, the annual operating agreement, it covers the term and renewal, um, the um, frequency of the invoicing. Um, we have a reserve account with them. They have they outline the restrictions. <clears throat> it is for conventional transit services and um, looks at the eligible expenses that the city pays a portion of, which is operating operating lease. We get some admin charges back. The city pays fifty three percent of the shareable operating costs, and that's service costs, maintenance, information systems, fleet insurance, marketing, and BC Transit administration. 
and it goes through, it states um, it's complying with provincial and federal laws, communications, tariffs and fares, um, the schedule of service, which is 12,500 hours per year. They run every day except Christmas and they're within municipal boundaries. Okay. That's it in a nutshell. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that simple. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Councillor, are there any questions? Councillor Haggard. Has there ever been any discussion with the regional district about expanding the services that the bus routes take? I think there have been, but I haven't really been involved. Okay. Um, yeah, there's some things up in the air right now. Okay. And I'm, I have a couple of meetings this week with BC Transit and yeah, I can't really speak to it until I have okay. more information. Thank you so okay. much. Great. Councillor Poon. Yeah, I would like to see um, more frequent bus services and also uh, bus service um, connecting us to the east coast of the island. Is that something that we can talk about at this point or? We can put that, um, expanding the service to connect with the east coast. We can certainly ask Transit, BC Transit about that. The buses that we have here are um, city buses they're not designed for the highway um, and the other is our fleet of buses is maxed out for the routes that we have so if we did want more frequent busing we'd have to get another bus okay Councillor Corbiel so I assume then BC Transit uh, signs a similar contract with a, a service provider locally is, is that correct yes mm -hmm. And who would be the service provider on the Parksville side? Is it uh, is it a different a different company? I don't know who um, um, who contracts with the island. We use diversified transport here in the on the in Port Alberni. This particular contract says uh, you know would follow the laws of of British Columbia. I'm wondering if in fact the the contract between BC Transit and uh, and the service provider says exactly the same stuff. And I'm thinking more in the lines of uh, workers' compensation issues and stuff like that. D do you know if it's just about the same uh, contract? I would expect they're in compliance with everything that they need to be because BC Transit being a division of the provincial government. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. So um, I would like to propose that um, we host a committee of the whole on um, transit in general. I think that um, an issue I heard loud and clear over the last year or so um, is the issues in our transit system um, not being usable, it taking an hour to get across town, um, strong desire to at least explore the option of connecting to um, the Nanaimo Regional District system that then connects from Parksville to Nanaimo. Um, they're working on expanding to Ladysmith and the Comox Valley is exploring the option of expanding and connecting to that system as well. Um, I think if there are regional transit conversations going on, we should be a part of those conversations and not leave it just to the east coast of the island um, to talk about it and, and leave us out as sometimes, sometimes they do. Um, I was really impressed with the public engagement process um, that staff conducted for um, the Harborview lands using um, a combination of platforms, the, um, the Let's Connect PA with um, surveys where you could give blanket opinions, there was um, there's you know voting mechanisms and all sorts of things and I think this would be a great um, this would be, that would be a great system to use for discussing transit um, and getting a better sense of what the needs of the community are. So I would like to see us host a committee of the whole with a public engagement process on this and work with BC Transit, um, Tofino Bus, um, and other stakeholders to just expand the conversation about transit in our community. And I will make that a motion if somebody would like to second it. Great. Are there any, and I'll, I'll add to my motion, um, uh, authorizing and signing the BC Transit 2019 Annual Operating Agreement. We'll make it all one. Great, are there any questions or comments on that? Comment. Councillor Solda. And um, ACRD's been talking about that through the health network to, to do the same thing. Interesting enough, in our meeting with Jordan Sturdy, mm -hmm. there was conversation, Madam Mayor, so yeah. I 
think this is a good time to start that. Yeah, and thank you. Um, we should certainly be involving ACRD in that process as well. Um, if we're talking regional transit, they're definitely a, a part of that. So thanks for um, bringing that forward. Okay, on the motion, all in favor? Carried. And item two, the from the Alberni Valley Pride Society, we have a letter dated May 21st from the Alberni Valley Pride Society requesting City Hall fly the rainbow flag at City Hall on June 14th, 2019 in recognition of the pride events that will be taking place from June 14th to June 15th. Councillor Solda. I'll move that the letter dated May 21st, 2019 from the Alberni Valley Pride Society requesting City Hall to fly the rainbow flag at City Hall on June 14th, 2019 in recognition of the pride events taking place on June 14th to the 15th, 2019 be received and council concur with the request. Is there any questions or comments? Councillor Haggard. Is the mayor going to volunteer for the dunk tank again at this event? De definitely, definitely. Okay. <laughs> love dunk tanks, just love them. My, my requirement last year was that I wanted to go first because um, that water gets pretty gross. So I'm going to make sure I go first again. <laughs> we'll bring your kids so they can do it. <laughs> That's right. They did it last year. That's right. Okay, so on the motion, all in favor? Carried. Uh, no proclamations today, so on to informational correspondence. City Clerk. Uh, just a couple of items, Madam Mayor. A letter from Spark BC advising that Access Awareness Week is this week, May 26th to June 1st. A letter from the Union of British Columbia Municipalities providing an additional federal response to Council's resolution from 2018 regarding West Coast Marine Spill Response Guarantee. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, an email from Roland Smith uh, providing comment regarding contacting Dr. Hasselback for his opinion on whether or not the McLean Mill site should be restricted to the public. And just as a side note for Council, Dr. Hasselback will be attending the June 24th Council meeting. Thank you. That was going to be my question. Um, Council, uh, Councillor Poon, would you like to move receipt to start? I'll move that informational correspondence item number one through th three be received and filed. Great. Is there a seconder? Second, Madam Mayor. And are there any items councillors would like to speak to or any questions? Okay. Seeing none. On the motion, all in favor? Carried. And there's no report from in camera, so that brings us to councillors' reports. Um, and I will move that council reports outlining recent meetings and events related to the city's business be received. Is there a seconder? And would anybody like to speak to any items of their own reports or ask questions? Councillor Corbiel. Yeah, I would just like to add in my report, in my haste to get my report out in time, uh, which uh, some people didn't, um, <laughs> I neglected a, a, few, uh, a few topics that were raised at the uh, school district uh, trustees meeting. Uh, there were four presentations uh, made at that meeting. Dr. Hasselbeck uh, made a meeting, which I identified in my report, but also the, there were students from uh, the high school. The Safe Club made a presentation. Uh, Anna Lewis made a presentation uh, regarding air quality and the air particulate from, from smoke. And there was also a uh, presentation on the Early Years Center. So I apologize for... Uh, missing those as it was a very interesting meeting mm -hmm. and um, yeah so I just wanted to say that that's great and I actually I probably heard the same presentation from Anna Lewis um, of the Air Quality Council at the Health Network meeting last week and um, found it very interesting she really highlighted um, the work that's been done in the valley to increase or improve the um, air quality and um, she really actually appreciated um, the significant efforts that Catalyst has made um, and also at the she actually made the comment I think that um, Catalyst is um, has made the most drastic um, improvement to our air quality by the voluntary steps that they have made um, over the last number of years and she was she spoke very positively the other thing that she did bring forward as a concern though is that um, Catalyst has a permit for their air emissions and that they actually only use roughly 5% of what their permit is and that is a huge concern to the air quality emission and I think always somewhat um, 
somewhat of a concern when a company changes hands um, because what Catalyst has done has been very voluntary, which um, has been fantastic, but definitely a concern for the future. So she was talking about bringing that forward and trying to have some conversations and um, possibly working to reduce that permit to what the levels they've been meeting over the past decade have been. So it was a really interesting conversation, um, and she spoke very highly of the work that Catalyst had done. Are there any other things people want to bring forward from their reports? Okay, then on the motion to receive the reports, all in favor? Carried. And item M, new business. Any new business from councillors? Seeing none, moving on to item N, question period. Any members of the public wish to ask a question? Yep, come on forward. And if you don't mind, just state your name and address when you get to the front. <laughs> so just to the microphone. And then if you don't mind, just saying your name and your address. Beg pardon? Your name and address. Uh, Clifford Tingey, 3140 11th. Uh, I like the talk on uh, uh, starlings. And it's uh, my opinion, the starlings kill 50 to 100 times more than the cats. From my observation, you're going, huh? They're not a bird of prey. How do they do it? They eat their eggs. I have observed it. And I'm thinking, well, maybe if we can cut them down, the city can make a bylaw. It's up to you that any property building has a nest in it. They give appropriate time to eradicate it and boil it up, whatever. And if they don't, the city could have a contractor go and do it and put it on a city tax. Uh, they're not a native bird of Canada. And they've done billions of dollars worth of damage in Canada. And Victoria is trying to blame it on the cats, but they're barking up the wrong tree, I think, because when the birds get out, sure the cats get the odd one, but the birds learn that cat is dangerous and they fly away. Now, I just something for you to kick around among yourself mm -hmm. and see what you think. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for bringing that forward. Thank you. Would any other members of the public like to ask a question? Okay, seeing none. Would somebody like to move adjournment then? So moved. Second? Second? All in favor? Carried.